Hey everybody, welcome back. I wanted to make a quick video today about reflections in Lumen, particularly under indirect light. This, is a bit, uh, this has been a pain point, I think, for a lot of people, especially in the architectural visualization space, because when you have scenes like this that are primarily lit under indirect light and you have reflective objects, uh, we get this sort of uh, swimming, grainy, noisy, temporally unstable reflection of um, surfaces uh, that can look really awful. And it can be combated in a couple of ways. One of the main ways is to make sure that your, um, your surfaces are um, primarily not just flat white walls or, you know, essentially having texture uh, helps a lot. So you'll notice that it's not really a, a problem on this textured floor, but it is a problem on the white walls. So that's, uh, that's one factor, right? The other part is making sure that as much of your scene is under screen cra uh, screen traces instead of um, the ray traced view. So you'll notice the edge of the sphere, uh, our screen traces are getting hits and it looks temporally stable. But for certain parts of our scene, this isn't possible, right? So in this uh, part of the sphere that's reflecting the area directly behind me, it's not hitting the screen trace. My content might demand that these be, uh, you know, white walls like this that that resolve in this manner and there's nothing I could do about that. Well, there actually is something we can do about it. And I want to talk about those settings now. Uh, first, I'm going to show you the results. Um, and then we'll talk about what they mean. There we go. So you'll see I've gone ahead and changed these settings and now we're getting what appears to be pretty much temporally stable image. It's actually not 100% perfect, but I, I don't think it's noticeable. Uh, and we've eliminated basically all of the noise in our ray traced view. So how is this done? Uh, there are two settings I want to talk about. Both of them are under the r.luminscene.radiosity section of the CVARs. And in particular, we're looking at the hemisphere probe resolution and the temporal dot max frames accumulated setting. The hemisphere probe resolution is defined as the number of traces along a one dimension of the hemisphere probe layout. Um, and the temporal frames accumulated is the is, uh, tooltip here says lower values cause the temporal filter to propagate lighting changes faster, but also increase flickering from noise. So essentially in fully directly lit areas, the default setting for both of these is four, and that's probably sufficient. But when we move into certain types of content, uh, four on either of these is not going to work. Uh, you'll find that increasing either one of them by themselves is probably also not going to work for you. For example, uh, I find that the probe resolution is probably going to be the biggest increase in quality, but if you just increase that alone, uh, you're not going to get rid of the temporal instability. Meanwhile, if you increase the temporal instability, but your probe resolution is insufficient, you're, you'll have a temporally stable image, but it will still be grainy. Uh, so I can go ahead and demonstrate that here. If we drop our probe resolution down to four, uh, you'll see that uh, we still have a temporally stable image, but it's very grainy. If I take this to the extreme here, uh, drop the probe resolution down to one, you'll see now it's not even temporally stable. Even if I set my max frames accumulated to something crazy, um, it would have a difficult time dealing with this. Right, so here's max frames accumulated 256, and it can't deal with the grain. So it's really about finding the right balance between these settings, and it's going to depend on your content. I find that for max frames accumulated, somewhere between four and 32 is probably good for most cases of um, the kind of content that you would be encountering. So I'm gonna set this to 24 again. And then for the hemisphere probe resolution, I find that um, four to 16 generally tends to be pretty good. Uh, once again, depending on the amount of accumulation you've got going on. Uh, you have to be careful about increasing the probe resolution too much. It does carry a memory cost and can easily put you out of VRAM. So I find often 16 is too much um, for my projects, but 
going up to eight is usually something I can afford to do. So again, tailor it to your content, understand what your memory constraints are, but using these settings, you can clearly see uh, that you can get a clean resolve in your reflections um, if you just find the right balance. So hopefully this helps get you some better renders. Thanks for watching. See you next time.